Alright, just wanted to throw out here before I get started with the actual video that black lives still matter and there is still more to be done. So please see the description of my video if you would like to look for resources or petitions to sign or black creators that I think you should follow. Listen to black voices, please. On to the content. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Breed and Find Out. And today I'm finally here to start a video series that I have been meaning to do for literal years. I think since 2018 actually. So as some of you who have been around for a while might know, I did an MBTI, so a Myers-Briggs Type Indicator book recommendation series based off of each preference. So like introvert versus extrovert book recommendations. So it was eight videos in total. And when I finished it, I mentioned that I was also going to do a book recommendation series on the Enneagram. And that never happened. In all fairness, I think when I finished off that series, I was entering the practical experience portion of my graduate program in school counseling. And my life was just very crazy. And I have now finished my first year after having graduated graduate school as a school counselor in the field. <laughs> so it's been like nearly two years since I said I was going to start this series. I just want to go ahead and give a disclaimer that I did learn about the Enneagram in graduate school when I was studying school counseling. For those of you who don't know, I do have two graduate degrees in school counseling, a Master of Education and an Education Specialist degree. However, even though I do have some sort of like academic exposure and background with the Enneagram, I am by no means an Enneagram expert. I am not saying this is like, if you are this type, you will definitely like this book. This is just me thinking about books that I have read and how they might suit particular personality preferences and styles based off of a person's way of being. It does not mean that all of these recommendations will necessarily work for people. It's just, I think that the basic desires of specific people might be well suited to specific books. And then to kind of explain how I'm going to be going about this series, I am doing a video for each basic type. For those of you not familiar with the Enneagram, there are nine types. Each type has two wings, but I'm not going to be talking about the wings. I'm just going to be talking about like type one, for example, which is what this video is going to be. And conveniently enough, I am an Enneagram type one. If you are curious about your Enneagram type, I will link down below a website that has a lot of information about the Enneagram. If you're interested in the Enneagram as a system for personality typing, I can give you recommendations on books to read that are helpful and give insight on the different types. I've read several at this point, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with my recommendations as a reader, not like as a counselor necessarily, <laughs> for the Enneagram type one, which is my type. Type ones are often called the reformers or the perfectionists, and they are characterized by this basic desire to be good. It's something that you'll hear me say when I do these videos on the Enneagram for each type is a basic desire and a basic concern almost, like a basic fear, something that scares them at their core. Basically, when you're looking at the Enneagram, you are thinking about the ways someone is motivated and how they're interacting with the world. So Enneagram type one people are called the reformers or the perfectionists because they have this striving for improvement. They're looking to make better their surroundings. And it comes from that desire to be good, to be right, to be, I believe some people say, above reproach. Like, you can't be judged because you are ultimately doing what is right within your own mind. People who are type ones have extremely high standards that are kind of aligned with their own morality or way of being. They're often very organized, but you don't have to be. That's not necessarily something. You don't have to be like a clean freak to be a type one, but that like, high standards and ideals could present itself in this way of being like very orderly. And then because of this, this desire for structure and goodness and being right, type ones don't like it when they make mistakes. They have a tendency to be quite hard on themselves. They want to be self-controlled. They want to be consistent in what they are doing. And that is something that I didn't totally realize about myself. I mean, I was aware of it, but I used to misidentify as a type four. 
I personally, just going on my own personal tangent, think that's because type 1s in like distress and disintegration go to type 4, which is very moody and sensitive and withdrawn. And I think I was in a disintegration kind of period when I was typing myself originally. But I do think, looking across the pattern of my life, that I am a type 1. I think I specifically, after a lot of contemplation, am a one-wing nine, which is like the nine, which I'll talk about way down the line, is the peacemaker. Something you'll also hear me mention when I'm doing these videos is that there are different centers or triads of a sort in the Enneagram. Type ones are in this instinctive or gut center, and one of the emotions that's very associated with that is anger or rage. So often type ones do have this internalized anger, but they're trying to repress it because of their desire to be good. So quiet fuming is something that you might see in a type one, but then that could, you know, you know how that could go. <laughs> so I have five book recommendations for you. Some of these are series and they are recommended by me to ones for particular reasons. And there's kind of a diversity in this that you'll see. Some of these books are things that I'm recommending because of the desire for reform, that feeling of anger and desire for justice. Some of these, however, I'm recommending because type 1s having these ideals, I think sometimes it is healthy to look at an idealized world or something that maybe people are critiquing for being very like picturesque or having high ideals. And I'm going to be using quotes from each of these books to kind of showcase why I think it would work for this type. My first recommendation for Enneagram Type 1s is the Wayfarers series by Becky Chambers. This is a space opera series. It features three books currently, but a fourth book is going to be coming out, I believe, near the beginning of 2021. And I have a particular shelf called Shelby in Books on Goodreads for books that resonate with me on a deep personal level, and all three of these books are on it at this point. The first book in this series, which really is a series of companion novels, is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, and I do recommend that you start there. You could start with one of the others, A Closed and Common Orbit, or Record of a Spaceborn Few, but it might spoil things from that first book. In The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, we are following Rosemary, who has joined an interspecies space crew who basically does tunneling missions. It is not a plot-centered story. You are really following the characters and their dynamics on this spaceship, but seeing the way they interact and seeing this like future based off of the idea of humans having left Earth and now interacting with all these other species is really cool. This book does explore colonialism and humanity, which I think will appeal to type 1s because of their desire to be good and right and to improve. And then also you do see some idealized ways of being, which I think type 1s can benefit from seeing sometimes. Though we do maybe have hard pasts or history, it doesn't mean that society has to continue in that way. We can improve and get better. And I just feel like these books are ultimately hopeful. And sometimes I think we as type 1s are not necessarily filled with hope. We are, but at the same time, when we're constantly striving for that improvement, it can be very easy to get bogged down. And this is something that, while it has some heavier themes, I think is ultimately light and uplifting, and type 1s would enjoy. And I did select a few quotes, particularly from The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, to kind of showcase why I think this would work for type 1s. All you can do, Rosemary, all any of us can do, is work to be something positive instead. That is a choice that every sapient must make every day of their life. The universe is what we make of it. It's up to you to decide what part you will play. The truth is, Rosemary, that you are capable of anything, good or bad. You always have been and you always will be. Given the right push, you too could do horrible things. That darkness exists within all of us. You think every soldier who picked up a cutter gun was a bad person? No. She was just doing what the soldier next to her was doing, who was doing what the soldier next to her was doing, and so on and so on. And I bet most of them, not all, but most, who made it through the war spent a long time after trying to understand what they'd done, wondering how they ever could have done it in the first place, wondering when killing became so comfortable. And then finally, 
We cannot blame ourselves for the wars our parents start. Sometimes the very best thing we can do is walk away. The Wayfarer series very obviously places an emphasis on the choices that we make and whether or not we are having a positive impact on our environment and that we ultimately can choose to do something different than what was done in the past and I think that's something that will really resonate with the reformer, the type 1. My next recommendation for the type 1 is Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. This is a memoir written by Coates as basically a letter to his son examining race and then that in combination with the ideals that our society currently has and how that interacts with the history that the U.S. has, particularly regarding race and racism. Obviously, I think type 1s are very justice-oriented because they have a desire to do right to be good. That doesn't always come out in a way that one would hope that it would, but we're always kind of guided by our ideals and morals and I think that this could kind of challenge some of the ideals that maybe we have from society based on this very white perspective that we've been passed down about our history. I also think that in this letter to his son you can really kind of feel the anger that Coates has about this history and mistreatment and with type 1s being part of the anger triad I think that this will resonate with them and hopefully inspire us to keep doing better. So some quotes that I think kind of showcase why Between the World and Me would work for type 1s. The point of this language of intention and personal responsibility is broad exoneration. Mistakes were made, bodies were broken, people were enslaved, we meant well, we tried our best. Good intention is a hall pass through history, a sleeping pill that ensures the dream. And still I urge you to struggle. Struggle for the memory of your ancestors. Struggle for wisdom. Struggle for the warmth of the Mecca. Struggle for your grandmother and grandfather, for your name. And then finally, I was made for the library, not the classroom. The classroom was a jail of other people's interests. The library was open, unending, free. My next recommendation for Type 1s is actually a book that is not yet released. Before you cry, oh, how can you be recommending it if it's not yet released, I have an advanced reading copy, which I read prior to realizing that the publication date was pushed back because of the COVID pandemic. So this book was originally supposed to come out in May, but has now been pushed back to, I believe, August. And that is Lobazona. This is a young adult urban fantasy book that features witches and werewolves. I have done an entire spoiler-free review for it, so I will go ahead and link that in the cards, but I definitely think, particularly in the second half of this book, that this will work for type 1s. Just know that you are following Manu, who lives in Miami, Florida, and she is here illegally. She is not a citizen in the United States, and she has a very distinguishing feature, her eyes, which are kind of golden and they have like, I believe it's sun-shaped or star-shaped pupils. And she can't really go out in public for that reason because especially being an illegal immigrant in this country, she can't afford to have that kind of attention drawn to her. There is a very fantastical element to this story. Obviously I mentioned witches and werewolves, but when we get to the second half of the story, we are seeing a society that Manu is introduced to that is very gendered in the way that it functions. And we also are seeing specific teenagers who are challenging the way that this society functions because of the gender roles that are assigned and then the unequal treatment and the embedded homophobia and all of these things that are kind of part of this society. You are seeing specific characters kind of advocating for improvement and change. And I loved that. <laughs> because this book is not yet released, I don't want to say the specific quotes that I have because reading an arc, things could have changed. But when the book is released, I will put in quotes in the description the textual evidence, if you will, for why I think this would work for type 1s. Let's just say there are some sentiments expressed about shattering conventions and not being the son of a system, which I just really, really loved. So if you like YA fantasy, this one, definitely pre-order it, because it's so good. 
and particularly if you are a type 1 who likes YA fantasy. I mentioned in my spoiler free review that the way that the themes and the world building kind of interact in this is just so good. Phenomenal. My fourth recommendation for type 1s is probably going to surprise people, but I have a very specific reason that I want to recommend this for type 1s because I think that it's part of the reason that this book worked so well for me. And that's Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is a new adult romantic contemporary with a male-male relationship. It's super hyped on booktube. You probably have heard quite a bit about it, but there's a reason that I think that this would work for type 1s. You probably already know about the premise of this book, but basically the first son of the United States and one of the princes of Wales, I believe it is, kind of become involved in a romantic entanglement that isn't forbidden exactly, but it complicates things. And honestly, I didn't know that that would work for me. However, there are a lot of things examined within this that I just particularly appreciated. Obviously, having very public figures who are in a male-male relationship and kind of seeing how that plays out was interesting and something that I think, because I care about social causes, was good for me. However, we are also seeing that Alex, the first son of the United States, is the son of the first female president of the United States. So it's hopeful in that way. She is also on her like re-election campaign for part of this book, I think actually the majority of this book, because she's trying to get re-elected. And just seeing like that represented, it felt so good to me. I don't know, it gave me these feelings of hope, which I mentioned I think type 1s need sometimes. And yes, things were quite idealized. I don't know that society is at the point that it is in this book, like, currently. But I still liked seeing it. I liked having those feelings like this is something that could be possible. And then also Alex, the first son of the United States, is multiracial. Um, I did recently see Jesse from J Bowties and Books mention that they think that the Mexican representation is not well done, so definitely like look into that and be aware of it when you are thinking about reading this, but seeing like these intersections of identity and this like alternate current history sort of of the United States just just appealed to my ideals, <laughs> which being a one, the ideals are important to me. Now for the quotes, because I do think that there are quotes particularly about like politics and history that I think showcase why this might be good for ones. Thinking about history makes me wonder how I'll fit into it one day, I guess. Relevant, I think, I can't speak for all ones obviously, not that I think that I'm going to have some sort of necessarily like historical influence or anything like that, but I do think about what my actions currently are and how they impact like future generations or how they could impact history and the whole world watched and history remembered and then finally a quote that i think might resonate with type ones because of that feeling of like internal struggle and the desire to be good and fearing being deficient or evil in some way i've always thought of myself as a problem that deserved to stay hidden never quite trusted myself or what i wanted before you, I was alright letting everything happen to me. I honestly have never thought I deserved to choose. And then finally, I want to wrap this up on a specific series. This series is an adult novella series that's silk punk high fantasy, and those are the Tensorate books by J.Y. Neon Yang. The Black Tides of Heaven, The Red Threads of Fortune, The Descent of Monsters, and The Ascent to Godhood. And this is another series that's actually like companion novellas. It's interesting that both of the series that I've mentioned on this aren't true series, but companions. The first two books in this series follow a set of twins. Each book focuses on a different twin, and they are the children of the protector in this society. The protector having given them up to a monastery after their birth. Each of the twins is kind of developing different powers and abilities, and you're kind of seeing how those develop. Also, how the twins' gender identities develop because they're in a society where you don't confirm a gender until you are an adult age. Well, I guess you can confirm earlier than that, but you don't 
need to until then. And then at the same time that they have their own development that's happening, a rebellion is going on. A rebellion against their own parent. So the twins are kind of having to navigate on top of their own development how they are going to continue interacting with each other and what kind of relationship they're going to have when they might end up choosing opposite sides of this rebellion. That's just the first two books though. The Descent of Monsters takes a very different kind of approach <laughs> and in that one you are following an investigator who is realizing that their superiors might be covering up atrocities and they're trying to decide what to do about it. The Descent of Monsters is actually my favorite in this series and it wound up in my Shelby in Bookshelf on Goodreads. And then finally in The Ascent to Godhood you are seeing from a very different perspective because this is after the war and rebellion has kind of ended. You are seeing from the perspective and looking back on the life of the enemy of the protector. So anyway, kind of interesting convoluted sort of storytelling there very different things happening in each of the novellas. But that whole idea of revolution and judgment and how one makes decisions in something that is so like tumultuous and what is right and what is wrong, again, something that would appeal to a one. All of the quotes that I selected for this one are from the first book, The Black Tides of Heaven. The saying goes, the black tides of heaven direct the courses of human lives. To which a wise teacher said, but as with all waters, one can swim against the tide. And then related to that, let the black tides of heaven direct our lives, he murmured. He turned to look at his partner. I choose to swim. And then finally, because he had always known, even as a child, that he was the lightning, while she was the fire and the core of planets. And the world needed both. Revolutions needed both. Someone had to wield the knives, but someone also had to write the treaties. I think that this book almost shows that there are different ways to be a one. Like I mentioned, there are one-wing nines and one-wing twos. One-wing twos are much more likely to be these like outspoken advocates, whereas one-wing nines are helping more to keep the peace. They're quieter about it, but it does not mean that they don't care and aren't doing things. I think that that actually kind of speaks as well to the fact that there are different ways to be an ally and advocate but we have to do something which seems particularly relevant with the Black Lives Matter movement. Anyway, those are the books that I'm recommending for type 1s. I tried to have a variety of things here, so nonfiction, contemporary, and then quite a bit of SFF because I read a lot of SFF. But even within that, I tried to have a little bit of variety, like a space opera, a YA urban fantasy, novellas that are East Asian inspired silk punk high fantasy. Comment down below to let me know if you are a type 1 and any books that you think might work well for type 1s. Obviously I have a lot of things that I could have mentioned here that I didn't. I was trying to think of things primarily that I had read within the past year or two, so some more recent recommendations. And then also I was trying not to overlap with my MBTI recommendation series. I just want to mention that in that series I think I had talked about the new Jim Crow, but I think ones should read that too. Hopefully it won't be nearly two years before I do the next Enneagram video. <laughs> but if you think that I should do those sooner rather than later, let me know. Anyway, remember that Black Lives matter. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a good day and until next time, bye.